Okay, welcome back. So we started reading. Let's continue reading in the over here. All right, so window notification. So to set up window notification, call the set notify window, the extended media event interface method, and specify a private message. Applications can use a you can use message numbers in the range from Windows Message App through BFFF as private messages. Whenever the Photograph Manager places a new event notification in the queue, it posts this message to the des designated window. The application responds to the message from within the Windows Message loop. The following code example shows how to set the notification window. All right, so you define this message. So let's also define, let's take this block with us after. But first, be event set notify window. And that's our window and, and graph notify. All right, so let's take this, copy it to our application. So when we construct our application, in play in play when we start running the graph once we extract the p event p event over here when once we extract the p event let's do what control v all right so let's define right so this message Let's place this message, control X, control F6, in the H file. Over here, it's customary to place definition of messages. The question is, is WM app F12 known over here? That, that, that's, that doesn't mean too much that the F12 goes there. does not mean that it will, it will uh, succeed in building. In any case, p event set notify window, the cast of the window. We need the window, the handle to the window. And, okay, the WM graph notify we should have. And could not find identifier because the p event is not the extended interface. We need the extended interface. So, I media event, let's try the extended, there it is, and let's define p event f12 as the extended, control space, extended, very nice, and this let's change to ex, can you just change it like this, I don't think so, so control h, control c, control v, ex, in all these places, Alt A nine locations. All right. Control minus. Control minus. Okay. The H W N D. Okay. So the function is now well. It's recognized, and um, this the W M graph notify we should have in the H file. All we need is the H W N D. So when invoking the play, let's pass the H W N D control space parameter and let's receive it. The HWND, let's pick it up over here. This is the definition of the HWND. And in the play function, let's place it over here like this with a small what was that control? I don't know what I did. Anyway, so there you go. F6. Let's see if this builds. F8. Play function must return a value. That's not the problem. The problem is that we modified the play function. So this is the new play function. Control C, Control F6. This one. Control V. Alright, F6. Build started. F8. Play function must return a value. Oh, over here, return, I guess, zero. I don't think we test the return value. So let's turn it into a void. Because 
and all this returning, oh, there's no returning here, there is a returning here, forget about this return, and over here the play should be void F6. And there it is. Okay, so what have we done up until now? So we invoked the set notify window method, which means we're telling the extended event interface, which is the graph. We're talking to the graph, we're telling the graph. Listen, set notify window, the window for notifications, that's its identifier. To this window, will you send this value F12, which is WM app, which is 8000 hexa plus 1, control minus, when you have, right, I'm in the middle of the sentence, when you have placed an event in your queue. Hmm. So now we take this value and our application expects now to receive case control V when there is when there is an event in the graph queue. So what we have been doing in WM timer we can now do over here we can be sure that there is an event waiting for us. Shift tab, open bracket, enter, close bracket, enter, tab, enter, tab should be over there, so tab, enter, control X, enter. So when you have all right, so this is now replacing the timer. So we no longer need the timer. I'm just going to comment out the timer. And after the play, comment out this line. No more timer, right? It's either the timer method that we employ or an event that we receive, right? The graph is going to notify the application after it places an event in its queue. So when we call get event from here, we are certain that there is an event waiting for us. Right? Uh, hopefully for each event that the graph places in its event queue, it will notify us once. So if it sent us two consecutive, so if it placed two consecutive events in the queue, it will also send us two events. Now sometimes it might pull out events. I think we read this somewhere in the documentation. So a notification might dive into the graph to, re to extract out the event and might find nothing. All right, we don't care. We're just looking for EC complete right now as far as we're concerned. So let's place a breakpoint here. Will this do the job? I don't know. Let's run it. All right. File play. Good. So as soon as we start running, we expect to get, right, the F10, the 14. That's the EC pa paused. But that, that's not interesting for us. F5. Five. So let's so test let's it. Test One, two, three. Good. As soon as it's finished, we get the second notification. We're always guaranteed that if we're here, that means F10 will always get a notification. There is our one. That's our EC complete. We don't need to kill the timer. F10. Code change is applied successfully. F5. So it invoked stop, but I'm not even sure. Anyway, so there you go. And this is perfect. Impeccable. I don't see a problem with this. Let's go back to the documentation, see what they say. The message is an ordinary Windows message and is posted separately from the direct show event notification queue. Right? It's posted separately. It has nothing to do with the direct show event notification queue. Nothing to do with each other. It's two separate but parallel 
right? Because the event notification queue and the Windows message queue are parallel queues. The advantage of this approach is that most applications already implement a message loop, right? It saves you work because you don't have to do anything new now, but as we mentioned in the previous lesson, we are loading the user interface thread. This is terrible for the performance of the application as far as the user is concerned. User interface thread should only be dealing with user interface. They're busy enough doing user interface, moving a window, uh, resizing it, that's enough. You don't want the user to, to move the window and the, the window is stuck. Why? Because you're doing other things with the, the, this thread that is supposed to be dedicated to the user interface. All right, therefore, you can incorporate direct show event handling without much additional work, correct? But as we said, there is an impact on your performance. The following code example shows an outline of how to respond to the notification message. For a complete example, responding to events. So in the WinProc handle event, right? We have the get event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because event notification and the message loop are both asynchronous, right? This is event driven. Is 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 asynchronous. It's not that one thing has to happen after the other. It's that things can happen in parallel. The queue might contain more than one event by the time your application responds to the message. Hmm. Also, events can sometimes be cleared from the queue if they become invalid. Therefore, in your event handling code, call the get event until it returns a failure code indicating that the queue is empty. All right, the documentation says we do. Right? When the documentation says what to do, there, it's not good to start arguing with the documentation. So, call get event until it, it returns a failure code. So we need an infinite loop, like the one that we wrote in our other application in the non-user interface application right over here somewhere right we have this infinite loop that keeps on extracting messages from the graphs event queue as long as there are events when there's no more events fine go home which is not what we do here here we do while true we forever there is no break here unless it's easy complete but if there are other events if there are no events we keep on we keep on invoking get event that's not what they're saying they're saying something else what they're saying is that we should implement an infinite loop like the one they showed before we'll, we'll come back to it alright so let's finish up reading this before you release the uh, iMedia event extended pointer, cancel event notification by calling set notify window with a null pointer. Part of the cleaning up is to invoke set notify window with null pointer. In your event processing code, check whether your iMedia event extended pointer is valid before calling get event. Obviously. These steps prevent the possible error in which the application receives the event notification after it has released the iMedia event pointer. Interesting. All right, we'll have to come back to this. These two passages are actually critical because we're, we're told to write code by the documentation in order for, applica for our application to be absolutely correct. So we'll stop here. We'll continue this hopefully in the next lecture. All right. Thank you very much, and we'll see you then.